In this series, it's finally time for us to turn our attention to shading for all of the windows in our small project here. So if you've been following along with us so far, you should have a grasshopper, grasshopper definition that looks something like the one on the screen here, where we're building our honeybee zones on the left. Those zones or rooms are then flowing into and getting assigned a fresh air ventilation system, heating and cooling system, domestic hot water system. And then in our last series of videos, we looked at how we set up natural airflow uh, for things like both the air tightness of the envelope as well as operable windows. All of that, of course, is then getting exported out to our PHPP document. And as we saw in the last video, with this setup as it stands right now, we're going to apply a default 75% reduction factor for each window in the file. So that default shading factor, reduction factor, gets applied to each window in the file uh, or in the model, regardless of orientation or size or, or anything like that. Uh, and that's because we haven't set up our shading yet. So in this next series of videos, what I'd like to do is walk through a couple of different ways that we can set up shading. For our model, we'll look at a more traditional PHPP uh, dimension-based method, and then we'll also touch briefly on how we can use some of the more powerful Ladybug tools features to calculate shading factors for our, our windows here as well. So we'll, we'll look at a couple different options, but before we do any of that, we should talk briefly about how shading is managed inside the PHPP. So let me come into my model here and let me come over to my PHPP. And let's take a look at the PHPP. And again, let's talk about how the PHPP manages shading uh, sort of broadly before we start talking about how we're going to configure and set up the shading factor calculations inside of our Grasshopper model itself. So to do that, I'm here in the PHPP now, let's actually start by going to our annual heating energy demand worksheet. So I'm going to go to the heating worksheet here, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit until I get to the portion here uh, labeled available solar gains, or Q sub S. Let me zoom in a little bit so that we can see that more easily. So what do we see here? What What is this calculation showing us? So first of all, we have a total solar gain of 3,600 kilowatt hours per year. That's made up of a couple hundred kilowatt hours through the opaque assemblies that they heat up in the sun. Zero horizontal, so zero through skylights. We don't have any skylights in the project. 400 kilowatt hours through the west facing glazing, about 2,300 kilowatt hours through the south facing glazing, 500 kilowatt hours to the east facing glazing, and maybe 80 kilowatt hours through the north facing glazing. So by default, the PHPP is going to break out and segment out the various glazing objects into their cardinal directions, and it's going to calculate the total solar gain uh, for each of those accordingly. Now, how are those how are those calcul how are those totals being calculated? How do we get these total kilowatt hours per year of solar gain? Well, the equation is quite straightforward. We take the so-called reduction factor for the windows for that orientation. We'll we'll come back to that. We multiply it by the G value, the solar heat gain coefficient. Roughly, they're not really the same thing, but they're more or less the same thing for our purposes. Uh, times the area. Times something called the global radiation. This here, this is just climate data. That's all this is. This is just local climate data. This is going to change if you change your location of your of your building. Area obviously is just based on the area of the the windows in the project. Uh, G value is just based on the specifications that we input back when we built our windows components. And then the one piece that we haven't really touched on is this guy, this reduction factor. And so when we talk about shading. In the PHPP, shading is not going to affect the global radiation. That's your climate. Shading is not going to affect the area. That's just the area. Shading is not going to affect the G value. That's just a specification. What shading changes, what shading adjusts, is this reduction factor. So these reduction factors, and, and they are just that. They're just factors. It's some number between 0 and 1. These numbers are determined in part by the shading situation of each of the windows in those orientations. And if you notice the math here, everything just gets multiplied together. So as the factor gets smaller, as the factor approaches zero, 
what's going to happen to the total solar gain through that orientation, it'll also approach zero. So a low shading factor will result in a low solar gain. A high shading factor will result in a high solar gain. So that's the way the PHPP, at least, manages all of this information. Now, there are some other things that feed into the reduction factors. There are some um, additional reduction due to um, non-perpendicular radiation, as well as dirt on the surface, um, as well as something called a glazing fraction. fraction. So there's, there's, other, there's a couple other pieces that come into play there. But for our purposes here in, in this series, we want to focus on the shading reduction factors and see how those are going to strongly affect these total reduction factors for our windows. And remember, the higher the factor, the more solar gain comes in. The lower the factor, the less solar gain comes in. That's the way that PHPP numerically assesses uh, all, of, all of this information. So, okay, well, where, how are we going to control and input values for shading? So, so if this is sort of the summary, this is the final sheet that shows me the results of all my inputs, where do I input all of the information? Well, we're going to input all the information around shading over here in this shading worksheet. And the shading worksheet is relatively straightforward. First of all, we just have a list of all of our windows. If I was to go to the windows worksheet, Notice in the Windows worksheet, we get the same list, right? These are all the windows that we input back when we built all of our windows. So those flow through into the shading worksheet here. And we have a bunch of reported information about all of our windows, their you know orientation, their angle of inclination, um, their height, their width, the total glazing area, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and hide all of that just because we don't really need it at the moment. Um, instead, let's just talk for a second about, uh, so I just, I just hid those um, columns, obviously. And did not delete them, just hid them. Uh, let's talk about how PHPP calculates shading. And as you can see here, PHPP uses this uh, sort of ternary shading calculation method where you're going to input the dimensions of any so-called horizon shading objects, so things like trees or other buildings, uh, objects out in the horizon um, uh, as viewed from the window itself. Uh, lateral reveal elements, so in many passive houses the walls are pretty thick, the windows are uh, inset in the walls, and so you can have some self-shading on the sides due to those so-called lateral reveals. And then lastly, any reveal overhang, reveal or overhang information. If you have horizontal overhangs over the windows, very common technique for shading windows, you have eaves or overhangs from your roof or dedicated shading elements, those will also get input here. And notice the inputs are all in meters. If you're working in IP, they would be in feet, but in this case, we're in meters. In any event, it's a dimension, it's a distance. So what we input are, uh, is a bunch of distance or dimensional information. That is all in the PHPP, in this worksheet. It's all combined together in order to calculate a total reduction factor. So way over on the right-hand side here, you can see we have a total reduction factor for the cooling case and a total reduction factor for the heating case. Right now, they're all set to 75%, because you can see here where we are setting everything to 75% as a just a default, just a constant. And remember how those shading factors work. The lower the number, the less solar gain. The higher the number, the more solar gain. So 75% is kind of a high number. It's not super high, but it's kind of a high-ish number. If that number was more like 10%, that would mean only 10% of the solar radiation comes through. Um, so obviously that would be a more shaded window. So that's how everything is set up by default. Right? So in order to calculate these shading factors more accurately, what we actually need to do is fill in all of this information right here. We have to go through, and one window at a time, we have to find any horizon shading objects. We have to find any side reveal shading objects. We have to find any overhead or overhang shading objects. We need to calculate the distances out from the glazing, the, the plane of the glass out to those objects, and then input all of that information here one data point at a time. So it's a lot of data to flow through. Obviously, it's not something you would want to calculate by hand or determine by hand. Um, and so obviously, we're going to want to use our 3D model to calculate and determine all of that information for us. That's going to replace these default factors. 
So rather than using these default factors, instead, we're going to calculate in detail all of these dimensions. And this is going to be the first method that we'll look at when we, when we look at the different ways of calculating shading inside of, um, inside of our, our grasshopper scene. Now we'll look at another method as well. I think we'll look at a, a couple of different methods for calculating shading. Obviously, um, note that you can choose to omit or not include any of this dimensional information, and instead you can just input a shading factor directly over here. So we can, in fact, calculate all these shading factors outside of PHPP and just drop them in one at a time. As long as we can do that calculation properly, as long as we can keep track of which window goes with which shading factor, and we can put them in in the right order, all of that information can flow in uh, in that manner. So it's not that it's not that we have to input all of these dimensions, but this is like this is the more traditional technique uh, nowadays with um, Design PH 2.0 or better, or um, or or some of the techniques that I'll show you here. We can actually skip over all of this dimensional input and just enter these shading factors directly in this case. So a couple different ways that we can do shading. And as I said, this is obviously going to have a big effect on our total reduction factors. It's going to strongly affect our, our cooling energy consumption as well as our heating energy consumption. So it's a really important piece of the puzzle here for us to, to do accurately. All right, so when we come back in the next video, we will take a look at the first of our shading methods. We'll take a look at how we calculate all the dimensional information for our PHPP, and we'll see what that does to our PHPP when we input all that info. We'll see how that changes the performance of our model.